Okay, part six, installing the steering part of the steering mechanism. This may sound funny, but I'm using two ways to steer this. The first way is I'm going to be using the handlebars. And when you turn to the right or turn to the left, it's going to release clutches in the back. And then when those clutches are released, it'll allow the vehicle to track left or track right. Then the second way is using these handbrakes. And then they will also be able to use to steer. So you'll be able to steer either harder to the left or harder to the right by either hitting the brakes. Or you hit both of them together and the vehicle will stop. In a later video, I'll show the installation of the hydraulic brakes. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I install the mechanism for releasing the clutches in the back using the handlebars. And I'm making it out of parts from a 10-speed bicycle. And the main release mechanism is going to be underneath the gas tank, so I had to remove those. I'm using these carriage bolts, and they're going to help me align, be able to align the sprocket with the sprocket in the back. Uh, I can move it up and down so that I can get them perfectly aligned. And then the actual mechanism, I'm building it out of the brakes of the 10-speed bicycle. And the way this system has to work is when you turn either left or right, it's going to be able to pull a motorcycle cable for a brake cable. And it's going to be able to, in the back, release a uh, basically an idler pulley. And that's going to release the tension on either side to allow one side to slip or one side not to slip. In normal, the normal position of handlebars when they're in the straight line, there's going to be tension on both of the pulleys in the back. And then what happens is when you either turn left or turn right, it's going to release the tension on that idler pulley and allow that side to slip. That's how it's going to steer, just using the steering wheel. The way it has to work, though, is when you turn one way or the other, the mechanism has to be able to only pull the release in one direction. So in other words, when, it, when you turn left, it can only pull the left side and pull that one cable. It can't affect the other side or it'll, it'll mess up the, pulley, uh, the uh, tension. So that's what this, this setup is, is made to do. The main sprocket here is going to be attached to this T in the middle where I'm putting the bolts on now, the nuts on now. And then that piece will turn. The cables that will release the clutches in the back will actually go to each one of these uh, fingers that are either on, on either side, to the left or to the right. And so when you turn the sprocket, it'll either pull one side or pull the other side. Now the way I've made it is I've used carriage bolts on this also so that I can get an up and down, uh, I can make this sprocket go up and down to make it level. And that helps me adjust the height so that when I put the bicycle chain on there, that I'll be able to get it perfectly level. Okay, you can see how this works. It'll push, it'll pull one side or pull the other side. This is where I'm mounting it. I'm mounting it on the end of the main um, support for the handlebars. And I oblong the holes, and I have two screws with lock nuts on there and what that does is it allow me to to adjust the tension of the chain so I'll be able to push it all the way forward and then install the chain uh, right now I'm getting the level of the sprockets so they both are aligned and as you can see I have them on the same plane of the uh, support for the handlebar so they'll both they're both the same angle and right now I'm putting on the bicycle chain uh, line up the handlebars, try to get as close as possible. I can adjust the uh, handlebars later if I have to to get it perfectly straight. And then I pull back, get tension on it. And then I tighten up the uh, these two screws and this locks, locks it in place and the chain's snug. So it can't come off. And then what I do is I just make sure that the both sprockets are level with each other so that it will it can't come off and then you can see as you turn the handlebars and it and because the sprocket is a little bit uh, bigger in the front it makes the back turn just a little bit more so you don't have to turn the steering the the handlebar so far to the left or to the right to make this thing uh, work in the back but you can see how one side it'll pull one side and the other side will stay put and then once I put the cables on 
it'll only pull one side when I turn either left or to the right. And you can see how this mechanism works. Okay, this is the location of where I'm putting the cables. I'm running the cables under the frame and I'm going to use a L bracket with a nut uh, welded to it. And the nut is the same size as the uh, end of the, the cable uh, holder. And I'm getting the position and basically I just want to make sure that there's enough there's enough room for the uh, cable to to extend all the way out when I when I turn this either left or right all the way out so I get the position I want and then I use two uh, self-tapping uh, screws and screw that in place and then later at a later time I'm going to use a uh, the crimps to crimp onto the end of this cable to keep it from being able to pull out and then I run both the cables back on the inside of the frame and I'm going to use clamps for that. Uh, I haven't done it yet because I still have to install the back drive wheels, but this is the end of the cables that will go to the clutch mechanisms that will help release the clutches when I steer.